You're watching the 49ers Report by Chat Sports. As always, I'm your host, Chase Sr. And as always, we are going to be doing a watch party on Sunday for this really big matchup between the rival San Francisco 49ers and the Seattle Seahawks. Be sure to join us 15 minutes before kickoff. We'll be going live right here on the channel. Make sure you hit that red subscribe button down below. 4.10 p.m. Pacific, uh, Eastern, excuse me, 1.10 p.m. Pacific. Subscribe and join us. Jeffrey Ray starting off this mailbag with a $5 super chat. Do you think that John Lynch and Kyle are keeping Lance from looking good to build draft capital for Jimmy Garoppolo, making fans think Jimmy is our only option? No. I think really what it comes down to, Jeffrey, is the 49ers just don't think that Trey Lance is ready to play. And I think they had a little bit of a security blanket when they took Trey Lance and moved up to number three. They knew that Jimmy Garoppolo was under contract for the next two years. So, Trey Lance, when they drafted him, was 20 years old. He played FCS-level football, and while he put up stupid numbers at North Dakota State, he only attempted a little more than 300 passes. So I think they're kind of plan, and they envision, okay, if Trey Lance is ready, we're going to play him. If not, we have a great backup plan, and one of the better backup plans in the NFL. A guy who has won a lot of games, he helped lead us to the Super Bowl in 2019, and if Lance is raw and needs fine-tuning and development, we have a really good quarterback in Jimmy Garoppolo who we can go with. Now, with Garoppolo playing well, he has certainly increased his trade value. Timmy Free, do you think trading Jimmy Garoppolo will affect the team's chemistry and relationship with one another? No, I don't think so. Jimmy Garoppolo is very well respected in this locker room, and I think a lot of his fellow teammates have stood up for him in that regard. But I don't think trading him away kind of impacts the locker room or the culture this is a business, and as a business, you're always looking ahead, finding ways to try and improve, and you have to make difficult business decisions with your personnel, and sometimes that includes letting people go, letting people walk, and moving forward with somebody else who gives you a lot of upside. That's with sports organizations and regular businesses. So players understand that they moved up to take Trey Lance because he's the future, so I don't think it's going to impact the culture at all. Ryan McDonald, thanks for watch, watching the show, my guy. Jawan Jennings is about to go off. Do you agree? Without Debo Samuel, he's definitely going to have to step up, and he's going to be more of a component of this offense. So look for Jawan Jennings to maybe get some more snaps and targets. Played really well against the Minnesota Vikings. Look for Trent Sherfield to get on the field more. He had a really big third down conversion, I believe, late in that game for the 49ers. So Brandon I. Going to step up. George Kittle breakout game could be coming. Jawan Jennings, Trent Sherfield, the secondary options in addition to those guys. Talent. I know that he's a big part of our offensive line, but during the offseason, would you trade Mike McGlinchey if the offer is right? Also, would you trade him if the Niners do make him available? I would trade away Mike McGlinchey. Tom Compton has been a really big surprise. I'm not going to go as far as to say he is a long-term starter at right tackle, but Mike McGlinchey, I believe, making around $10 million next year. I think that was guaranteed to him, too, because he did sign that fifth-year option. So, yeah, he has become somewhat expendable because other people have been able to step in and play well. So Tom Compton playing good. Jalen Moore, you drafted him with the hopes that he could play guard, maybe even tackle. So if you can save some money, trade away Mike McGlinchey and get something back, tackles are always a premium asset for all teams across the NFL because offensively, I think it's the most important position outside of quarterback. Garcia Brothers, by the way, I'll do a beer shotgun for a $50 Super Chat on our live show. Do you think Josh Norman is a liability to the team with this attitude and punching players in the back, even though he was forced or has forced so many fumbles and has been a productive player? Yeah, um, look, Josh Norman is old. He's 34 years old. He has not been good in coverage. He has been consistently beat. He has been consistently flagged in coverage as well. But he has been able to make up for that with savvy plays. He's been able to make up for that with some veteran kind of instincts. And I'm taking a look at his stats here. So Josh Norman has played nine games, and he has forced six fumbles. I mean, that's the best in the NFL. That's really good. So for what he doesn't do on the back end and for how he gets burnt in coverage, he's been able to be a turnover machine, and that's valuable. So too is his veteran leadership. 
He also, you know, some of his emotions just get the best out of him now that I think about it, too. So I think he's a decent culture guy. Michael Norris, remember the turnovers we were talking about? Have we been doing better overall in the turnover ratio now? Yes. Three consecutive wins. San Francisco has been on the right side of the turnover battle, 6-1. to one. And you already know, Seattle's going to play dirty. They're going to try to slow this game down. They're going to try to play it physical. They're going to be punching the football out like Josh Norman has because that is their only hope of beating San Francisco. So as long as the 49ers win the turnover battle, I think they win this game. If they turn the rock over and they get sloppy, that's when you give a bad team that's gasping for air, air. City Boy 34, what do the 49ers need to do to cop a win over the Seahawks? Yeah, a couple of things. And I just kind of actually hit on some of it. So win the turnover battle without Debo Samuel. I'd really like to see George Kittle involved in this pass game. Brandon Ayuk is going to have to really step up as the number one wide receiver with the sole focus on him among the wide receivers on this roster. Win the turnover battle 6-1. to one. That's been during that three-game winning streak. Run the hell out of the ball because I don't want to see Russell Wilson with the rock. He was awful against the Washington football team. Inaccurate and also just flat out missing reads. But he almost made magic happen last night. And how many times has he made magic happen against the 49ers? So those are the keys to my game. Good job by producer Marshall for popping that up. If you think that the 49ers will beat the Seahawks in, I'm almost calling it a must-win game. You lose it, it really messes with your mental psyche and really affects your standing in the NFC. If you think the 49ers will beat the Seahawks, hit that thumbs up icon and like this video. Let's also give a shout out to today's presenting sponsor, Fanatics, for making this mailbag possible. This is really the best deal out there on the internet, and it's at the perfect time with the holiday season here. Why would you go out and shop when you can just chill at home, watch some 49ers highlights, watch the 49ers report, and get this delivered to your doorstep? A hat t-shirt combo, both coming in this package for $20. 50% off, only if you use that link down below. Chatsports.com slash 49ers combo. Use that link for that deal to apply and so that Fanatics knows that Chatsports sent you. Adrian Avila, who do you think would be a good backup for Trey Lance if Jimmy Garoppolo leaves? Backup quarterbacks. Man, Colt McCoy, I think he's a solid backup. I think Cam Newton as a decent backup, he is not good as a starter. I want to say that. But Cam Newton, short yardage situation, he's in the shotgun, has to pick up a yard, maybe has to make a little bit of a throw to give you a different wrinkle. I don't hate it. And then you're looking at other just like journeyman type of guys, Nate Sudfeld. I'm out on Josh Rosen. Rosen, I think he's a scrub. But you're looking at those types of low-level players. Shane Eslick, do the 49ers have any appeal for free agents or does the overpayment of free agents remain the only way to bring in talent? Yeah, there's that saying out there, free agents are a free agent for a reason. Some of the guys hit, some of the guys don't. Sometimes these guys just don't have much gas left in the tank. Um, it really just comes down to that. Now, I think the 49ers want to kind of control their own destiny and take care of their own players. I'm talking about Debo Samuel, who is in year three, going into year four, the final year of his rookie contract. Nick Bosa, like Debo Samuel, one of the best players in the NFL this year. You want to pay those guys and then look to some of the free agents out there. Now, if there are good free agents in the defensive secondary, safeties like Tyron Matthew, J.C. Jackson of the New England Patriots, and they're made available, and they don't go back to their respective teams, and they can be had for an affordable price. 49er secondary does need some retooling. Born Alive 23. Who will need to step up without Debo or Fred Warner? Ayuk, George Kittle, the ground game going to have to be really good. Um... As for Fred Warner, hopefully Dre Greenlaw can play coming off that groin injury. He's day-to-day -day right now. Aziz Alshire, what a find he's been since coming to the 49ers as an undrafted free agent a couple of years ago. He's really been around the football as a turnover machine. Jawan Jennings, Trent Sherfield, uh, Ayuk, all those guys going to need to step up without the services of Debo or Fred Warner. Are you worried about the Niners without Debo and Fred? Let me know right now in the comment section. Type Y for yes, type N for no. Be sure to get those votes in down below. 
Ryan McDonald, we have to beat the Seahawks. This is a must-win game. Actually, every game is a must-win game at this point. I'm not going to say every game is a must-win game. I mean, you win out and you go 12-5. and five. That's tremendous. I don't think that's realistic. I think there might be one or two losses during the remainder of this regular season, but I do think that this Seattle game is as close to a must-win as possible. First, you got to kind of reverse the misfortune against Seattle. They've owned this rivalry, having won 14 of the last 16 games, but you lose it, you drop back to 6-5. and five. That's when teams like Washington can overtake you. Minnesota, Atlanta, New Orleans, Philadelphia, Carolina, New York, Chicago. All these teams closely contested in the NFC playoff picture. Brian King, why aren't the 49ers using a throwing coach for Trey to further his talents? Otherwise, did they trade away all the uh, all the draft capital for him? They have him linked up with coaches, and Trey Lance has been involved with some of the best quarterback coaches out there. Um, Quincy Avery being one of them. He coaches up some of the best quarterbacks in the league, namely Deshaun Watson, even though he's dealing with his legal situation. And then Kyle Shanahan has been working with him as well. And Trey Lance has gone to quarterback academy. So they're doing a lot of work with Trey Lance behind the scenes. There's no question. Skylar Bell, would you take a second round pick for next year for Jimmy Garoppolo, knowing we have done very well in the second round of drafting Debo and Fred Warner. I actually think Fred Warner, was he a third round pick? Correct me if I'm wrong. But yeah, Debo Samuel in the second round. Yeah, I'd trade Jimmy Garoppolo for a second round pick. I would do it. Yeah, no, because that's really good value for Jimmy Garoppolo. And you don't have a first round pick next year. You traded that away for Trey Lance. So with a team that's ready to compete right now, it's important, of course, to have elite players. And they do across the board on both sides. But because you're paying big money to a lot of those elite players and you want to pay Bosa as well as Debo, you have to hit on some of these draft picks because those secondary backup type of players really go a long way in helping you out throughout the course of the season. I mean, shoot, Jason Brett goes down and the secondary depth was shot and the secondary really struggled for a long time. If we didn't answer your question during this mailbag, you can ask me a question on Twitter. You can hit me up on Instagram at Chase underscore senior during our live show. I am giving you all shout outs for those of you who give me a follow. Hit me up. If you got life advice, life questions, hit me up at Chase underscore senior. Call me Ricky. Derek Stingley Jr. or Kyle Hamilton. Uh, Hamilton, excuse me. Can the 49ers draft either of them? They're going to have to move into the first round to take either Stingley or Kyle Hamilton, to be honest with you. Derek Stingley out of LSU, probably the best cornerback in this NFL draft class, even though he struggled to stay healthy and with his play the last year or two. Kyle Hamilton, I think he's a bona fide sure thing. His sideline to sideline range really is insane. He's got excellent ball skills. If I had to take one of these guys and plug him in on the 49ers, it'd be Kyle Hamilton. He is so, so good. I just don't think they're going to move up into the first round to take a defensive back. EJ Redemption, nice little photo there. Guy looks familiar. Yeah, right here? Okay. Chase, you the goat. If we win a Super Bowl with Jimmy, do we consider keeping him for another year or do we still trade him? It really all comes down to if Trey Lance is ready to play or not. If Trey Lance is ready, I don't think it really makes a lot of sense to sit him on the bench next year. I also think he brings an incredibly dynamic element to this 49ers offense because think about it. Like Kyle Shanahan as a head coach has had to work primarily with Jimmy G, C.J. Beathard, and Nick Mullins. None of those guys have the athletic ability that Trey Lance has. So his running ability, his passing ability, I think could unlock a different dimension to this 49ers offense. If he's ready to go, Take the training wheels off him, and let's see what Kyle Shanahan can do with a really intriguing quarterback prospect. If he's not, play Jimmy Garoppolo. They're in a good position. Now, I know I, know, uh, I, know I asked a lot of you to give me a follow on Twitter and Instagram, at Chase underscore senior, but my boy producer Marshall Green has been killing the game as well. Covers the NFL, New York Giants, and is a killer producer for us here at Chat Sports. I want to show him that the Niner gang shows out. So give him a follow on Twitter at Marshall Green underscore. If you give him a follow right now, he'll give you some shout outs before we head out of here on our live show.